Hello, everybody. Welcome to today's session. We got a fantastic session set up for you today. The secret cave where the cave, the wine is stored. It's an amazing historic place. Um, I'm not going to talk about it because there's people more knowledgeable about this that will share their information with you. We have Yonatan from Benyamina Winery where the cave is produced. Uh, as always, we have Josh from the IWPA, the Israeli Wine Producers Association, who's going to MC this event. Hi guys, uh, beautiful day here in uh, Westchester, New York again, as uh, we've been having some nice ones lately. So that's always fun to be outside the house and uh, talking to you guys. Uh, I would rather be with Yonatan right now though, um, in this fun little spot. Um, I've been to many of the wineries many times in Israel. I've only been to the cave twice, I believe. Um, I've had the, the chance to go visit there and I can remember driving down that little bumpy road on the way there, wondering where I was going. Um, and as you guys were about to see, it's, it's a very cool place. It's a very cool story. And uh, they're making some very uh, fun and cool wines there. Hi, welcome everyone. Uh, we are here. So I'm good. I'm really happy to be part of this uh, virtual experience uh, for kosher wines for you guys. Uh, welcome, welcome to uh, the Carmel Mountain region. Today we're going to see the cave virtually and uh, I would like to introduce you today who's going to be with me, Eliyahu, our wine ambassador. Some of you have already met him. And we are standing here just outside in the Carmel Mountains in uh, the, we call it Vadi Milek, which means the, the valley uh, of the salt. Milek means uh, salt. And in ancient times, uh, this way going all the way down to Egypt, leading all the way up to Syria and further beyond was the main passageway for carts, for moving uh, goods and for going all the way down from Africa, all the way past the Mediterranean, all the way to the northern parts, uh, Europe and uh, Eastern Asia. Um, and uh, we're, we're just now here, it's, it's sunset. Uh, and uh, I'll just show you a little bit around so you could see that just there's right behind me you could see the sunset going down behind us behind the hill and uh, uh, I'll just show you a bit the scenery some of the the bush around the, the natural uh, Mediterranean bush you can see they're still flowering we're just getting into summertime now how long has the cave been in use for you guys? Can you give us a little history before we maybe walk into this, this beautiful cave? Like, how long have you guys been utilizing it? And how did you find out to, the, the ability to be able to use it for what you're using it for? Uh, the cave, as I said, the, this was a, uh, the ancient passageway. And during the Ottoman period, uh, when the, Turk, the Turks were uh, in control of, the, of the, this region, the region of Israel, uh, towards the end of the 16th century, um, they built the cave uh, using the architecture which they used back then. They dug into the mountain. Uh, it's limestone, soft limestone, and they just dug into the mountain and created this cave uh, in order to, to store goods. Uh, the temperature inside there is 18 degrees, between 16 to 18 degrees all year round. Uh, and keeps uh, humidity at a low level of around 80%. Perfect condition for storing goods and of course for aging wine. It's two keys which you need to change, at the, you need to turn at the time. Oh, look at this. Okay. Let's go in. Wow. Oh, look at this little setup. <laughs> I was talking about the arcs, the ar architecture of the building of the cave, which was done in the end of the 16th century. You can see the arcs um, and 
and up until the end of the Ottoman period, the cave was was using them to to store goods, just goods, mainly mainly foods, uh, to keep them cool. Uh, during the British mandate, uh, they used to they they uh, they used the, the cave for storing wines and uh, brandy and whiskey. Um, there was a a slight time when uh, uh, the Rothschild family. Uh, about a hundred years ago, used to own the cave and store some goods here. And Binyamina uh, had their first started using the cave from the first vintage, vintage in uh, year 2000. Until today, uh, the cave is uh, using for Binyamina. Why we created a cave winery and. Uh, a new vintage of the cave wine and the old vines. So we have two items coming out of the cave each year. Uh, we have the yep. regular cave and we have the cave old vines. And, and which varietals are you working with in, in the cave or using as blending in the great cave? Uh, mainly Cabernet Sauvignon, usually over 50% Cabernet Sauvignon. Merlot, just uh, around 40% Merlot and a touch of Petit Verdot. A classic Bordelais. Classic Bordelais blend. Uh, it's always been like that with slight changes in the percentages of the varieties over the years. Uh, but that's, that, that's just as how the blend goes. And I, 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 I wanted to talk to you a little bit about the, the, the vines, the vineyards. Hey, David, I have a quick question for you while they're getting this going over there. I know that you're a big fan of the cave. Um, can you maybe talk a little bit about uh, different vintages of cave that you've uh, drank over the years and what do you think about it? <clears throat> yeah, it's actually um, one of the things that I find really cool about the cave is the the Mavushal that they've done which was uh, probably one of the first or one of the early wineries that had a high-end wine that was both Mavushal and not Mavushal and there's uh, a lot of debate that goes around about the quality of Mavushal versus not Mavushal and for those <clears throat> who aren't familiar with Mavushal it's flash pasteurization where the wine is uh, prepared in a way that makes it uh, for certain standards of kosher. So um, it's just amazing to see that that the uh, you know that they were able to do that. They took that leap, and and it's actually a very very popular high end wine. These are big wines, full body, uh, good tannins, good fruit structure. And in terms of, and I haven't tried the 2016 yet. I have it right here. Let them touch and I'm looking forward to trying it, but as always, I mean, these, these wines get rated well and they and they have good staying power. So overall, good stuff. But now that Yonatan's back, I can stop talking. David was just mentioning that you guys make a Movushal version as well, um, which everyone I'm sure is familiar with. How long have you been doing that for? Ah, the Movushal version for. We've been, uh, all the way along, we've been uh, creating the Movushal. Since, since we've been uh, working with you guys, we have been creating the Movushal. Our grapes for the cave uh, are all grown in the upper galilee region the northern part of israel on the border with lebanon um, all the vineyards are uh, around 700 meters above sea level um, we have a cabernet sauvignon at our north most northern point is in emek kadesh now that is just right over the the border and we grow the cabs ca most of our Cabernet Sauvignon for the cave grows there. Uh, our Merlot grows around the little village of Kerem Ben Zimra, which is slightly uh, further south. And just uh, on the plateau of Dalton, which is just uh, a little bit further south than Kerem Ben Zimra, we have the old vines growing there. Now, all of our grapes are quite, uh, the, the, the grapes are quite uh, old vines, not as, as the old vines of the Cabernet Sauvignon, but they're all very mature grapes, old vineyards. Uh, they were all planted around the 80s and the 90s, uh, producing very low yields, uh, around 700 kilos per dunum. Uh, so that's that's very low yields 
for uh, for for grape growing. Uh, this the, these low yields give the grapes uh, uh, a lot of richness. The 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 the, the vines uh, are able to get the the grapes are a lot more concentrated. A lot of the energy coming from the root system all the way up. The 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 the, the canopy. Everything is very mature. It's like a little little tree, a little bush, and it uh, protects the grapes and really uh, produces very, very small clusters of grapes uh, uh, and uh, very concentrated. And from then we make our, our cave wine. Uh, a little bit more about the old, the old vines. This is, uh, it grows on, uh, on uh, what, what is unique in the upper Galilee. Um, the upper Galilee is mainly limestone and red soils. But what is unique to where the, the old vines grow and the area of uh, Kerem Ben Zimra is the soil. There was a, a volcanic eruption. This is uh, ancient times. Uh, there was a volcanic eruption and there's a little bit of volcanic soil, basalt soil and uh, uh, volcanic rock all around that area. And this volcanic soil and uh, dark soils, they allow the root systems to go deep into the ground. And this is how the vines can uh, mature and stay with us for a, a, a long time. We can grow the grapes there for many years. Like I said, the old vines is from the beginning of the 80s. The root systems are deep. They don't need any irrigation. Uh, that's what that's what makes it, it. It all begins to make the cave wine. It all begins from the growing of the grapes and the unique grapes which we have in in that special uh, little region in the Upper Galilee. Can you tell us a little bit. Where did you learn all this fun stuff about wine that you know? Tell us a little bit about yourself, maybe as well. Uh, Jonathan, Jonathan Schultz for whoever. Uh, I'm a winemaker at Binyamino Wines now for five years. Uh, going towards my fifth vintage, which is coming up in the next month and a half. I got into wine many years ago. Uh, grew up in a little village not far from here, Zichon Yaakov, um, and found myself working in uh, uh, another winery in the region, Carmel Winery, uh, just doing tour guides. As, uh, I was a uh, very young age, just a boy. Uh, got into this whole amazing world of wine. Uh, if I would like to produce wines in Israel and grow grapes, then a uh, uh, good place to study would be Italy. I uh, was very lucky to study there. And uh, after a few more uh, traveling around the world, where, working in different places, northern Italy, sometimes a, a little bit in Australia, uh, got back to Israel, worked here a few vintages and joined the uh, Binyamina team uh, five years ago. Do you guys offer tours of the cave? It's very rare, but uh, um, if it's booked in advance and uh, if they come through you, you, Josh, then we could try and do something, hmm. maybe with a group, but uh, it's, a, the, it's a bit difficult to get here. Uh, all the uh, logistics, uh, so we, we, we haven't been offering a, a tour of the cave for the last uh, years. And when I was before the class today, I've been showing some cool wines. I found a 2007 cave here. Um, can you talk maybe a little bit about why the cave is so perfect for storing wine and what you're doing now? And maybe in the future of how to store the perfect bottle of cave and how well it, long it can drink for. Because we're seeing a lot of questions about, I have a 13, I have a 12, because it's still drinking. Um, so actually, actually uh, Eliyahu, which you can see behind me, we. We went into the archives of, uh, of uh, Binyamina Wines in the winery. We have a huge archive. Also, it's uh, in very old vat. We store our, our archive and we, and we did a tasting from 2000 all the way up to, to, to recently. Now we tasted all the caves and we wrote down our notes. And uh, uh, you, you, it, it's surprising you can have a... a we were surprised uh, to, to see the quality of 2005, uh, a still a vibrant wine. Um, 
2006 wasn't as vibrant as, the, as, as five, but seven was impressive, very bold wine, if you're asking about the 2007. And we wrote down, we, we, we did some notes, so whoever's interested uh, uh, and has a bottle of wine and he wants to know uh, a little bit more information, we, we did some wine taste, we did, we did write down notes, and if they would like to know if, uh, what, what, what our thoughts were about them, then we could share them. Um, what is unique, you can't feel it, but it, it, it's, it's um, 20, 26 degrees outside and I'm sitting here and it's 18 degrees in here. And as you go down further into the cave, then you just feel the temperature even dropping lower, it gets around 16 degrees. Now, the wine just sits in here, it's quiet, there's nothing around us except for natural Mediterranean bush all around us from a good couple of miles and uh, it's hidden away you saw this great vault that we opened up to get inside it just keeps here in the dark first of all I want to point out to everybody that uh, 16 to 18 degrees Celsius is between 60 and 65 degrees Fahrenheit for those of us who don't know the difference the other thing I want and this is all education stuff that's my stick as, as everybody will tell you. The other thing that I want to tell you is the only thing you're doing a great job, but I want to specifically address the issue of, he mentioned the amount of tons per, per dunum that are coming for the wines for the cave. Now, just to give you a perspective, he, speak, he spoke about it in dunum, that's the equivalent of between two and three tons per acre in the United yeah. States. Now, just to give you a perspective on that, just imagine the most expensive wine in Napa Valley, the most expensive wine in Napa Valley is something like $10,000 per ton. And it's something like four to five tons per acre. Okay. So when you're talking about three tons per acre, I mean, it could get lower than that. It could get in the high threes. But when you're talking about three tons per acre, you're talking about berries. That's what we call grapes at the harvest stage, talking about berries that are so intense, that are so rich, that are so flavorful, that they're literally, I mean, I love to describe it this way, flavor bombs in the mouth when you at harvest. And that's, that's what the final product is. That's why the final product, the cave itself, has that flavor bomb feeling to it. So uh, go ahead, tell us a little bit about what you're tasting. Okay, so 2016 cave. I'll, I'll talk a little bit about uh, uh, this harvest. 2016, we had a, uh, we didn't have a, ve a very, a very strong winter, but there was uh, good enough rainfall for that region where the, where, where we grow the vines. Uh, it wasn't very cold, uh, but we had a, a, a very mild spring uh, for the 2016. It was on average around uh, uh, three days of cold maceration where we keep the juice with the skins and we keep them at a, a, a cool temperature of around 10 degrees uh, without letting the uh, 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 alcoholic fermentation begin. Once, uh, once uh, we finish with the cold soak, the alcoholic fermentation begins uh, on average once again around a week and uh, after that we let the wine sit on the skins for another once again between 72 hours up to a week soaking on the skins getting more extracting more more flavor more phenolic compounds more color out of the skins and uh, after that we press off uh, the grapes uh, and uh, the wine uh, after that undergoes in uh, stainless steel tanks uh, undergoes the second uh, fermentation, the malolactic, malolactic fermentation. Uh, and after that, uh, the, the, every, every variety is put in, into its uh, own lot. Uh, Petit Verdot, Cabernet, Merlot and Cabernet, each one into French oak barrels. Uh, uh, we usually use around 30% of uh, new French oak every year for every vintage. Um, and the rest... We, uh, the rest uh, is second and third passage. We saw that uh, having uh, 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 this, this balance between some old barrels and some new barrels gives us the nice 
feeling that we're looking for in the cave wine. Uh, and uh, 2016, uh, we bottled him just around this time last year. So this is after the year in the bottle, or, or I, I felt that he was already uh, six months after the bottling towards December, I felt that he was already uh, ready for release and uh, uh, was good enough for uh, 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 taking him out to the market. Um, and yeah, he's. Uh, let's let's taste it now, uh, Eliao. Can we have some of the wine, please? Uh, that was a bit about the vinification and uh, and the uh, 2016 vintage. Um, very fresh fruit, as we say. Nice berries, uh, red fruits coming through. Can get the, the 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 oak, the balance of the oak on the end. Would you say, this is a crazy question, would you say the cave has any smell in the wine? Not because you're in the cave now, but when you're at home, can you smell the cave? And that's exactly what, as we walked in <laughs> this afternoon into the cave to prepare for the, for the, for the Zoom, then Eliao said, this is, this is, I, I, Eliao opened, we opened the door, Israel the Mashgiach opened the door, and Eliao said, this is the smell of the cave. This is what I feel in the wine every time we open it. Another thing about the, 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 the blend, which I, I didn't mention, we talked about the vinification. We have here a 56% Cabernet Sauvignon, another 34% of Merlot. And in the 2016, it was uh, something that we didn't do uh, before. Usually the Petit Verdot was around 5 to 7%. Uh, we went uh, a little bit higher, 10%. It doesn't sound uh, 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 very significant, but, but in the wine, it really does make the difference. And we felt that in 2016, uh, the fruit of the Petit Verdot was uh, uh, um, uh, giving, adding more complexity, more freshness, more red fruit. Uh, uh, and we decided to give him that little extra 3%, 5%. Uh, which we, 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 we didn't have uh, in the previous vintages. And, uh, and we see it now over, over the maturing in the bottle and in years to come, uh, the 2016, I can say, can age uh, in good conditions uh, for many, many, many years. Uh, um, he's still, uh, still got a, a, long, uh, a long time ahead of him. Would you say 10 to 15 years is the window? Yes. Yes, I will say I would say he will reach his peak in uh, 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 probably three to four years, uh, and he will stay there. He will stay there under under good good uh, uh, good conditions of storing. He could stay there for uh, at least another yeah from now on uh, at least another ten years, uh, and, and who knows fifteen or even even more. And what about the Mavoso version? The same. Wow. Wonderful. What uh, what do you normally when you have a bottle of cave that you open at home? What are you normally pairing it with? With with a roast beef, roast beef, roast potatoes. That 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 goes down. Good for me. It's definitely been very good. Um, and it was. I mean, it's been out of stock for a while. The old vine caves as well has been out of stock for a while. So we we just can't keep up with uh, you know with the supply. Um, not our fault. We just we take whatever we can get. I'm not blaming anyone, don't worry. But if the product is that good, it's very popular. I see some people mentioning that they, you know, that they served it, especially at Bar Mitzvah. Um, so, you know, this is definitely one of those wines that, that you that you serve and it's, imp it's an impressive wine. It's a wine that's, that's there to age, to celebrate with. So uh, just great overall quality. Just to give you a little bit more, uh, the feeling of what we have here, just to show you a barrel. Um, with a small explanation. Uh, so this is a Merlot. This is uh, 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 from 2019 in a Radu barrel. You can see it's a barrel 30, 19 for the year, uh, Binyamina wine. And if I can get a little bit closer, the, the barrel toasting, it's called Evolution R. And we do, you can see the slight M on the bottom there. That's medium plus is the toasting that we like to give our barrels here you've got a little bit more light uh, and you can see the label there which says cave l m e r 219 so this will be cave lot 
Merlot 2, which will be the second Merlot going down into barrels uh, for the 2019. And Merlot Chai Fadida, that's the name of the winter from Kerem Ben Zimra. The, the Radu is a Cooper, which is uh, uh, Radu barrels are produced in Bordeaux. It's a classic Bordelais barrel, Bordelais company. Uh, a lot of big Bordeaux chateaus and wineries use them. Uh, you can see they have a very, uh, this is their symbol where the guys are hammering away, creating these amazing barrels for us to store the wine in. And here on the other side, in order to give complexity, we have a 2016 barrel uh, from Tonnelier and Marsanet, which is stationed in Bourgogne. And Rubies is the type, medium plus type of toasting which we like. And then you can see that we have uh, Cave LPV 218, once again, Petit Verdot, the second Petit Verdot going down into barrels in 18 years. And th this, this, will be here for another year and uh, pumped out in a year from now. Uh, I won't go further deeper to show you the, the cab and the, as we go in, but uh, you can just see yeah, yeah. all the way how deep the cave goes in, more than 100 meters deep into the, into, in, deep inside the mountain. And you can see it, it looks like an endless uh, uh, rows, two rows of uh, barrels. So I'll talk a little bit, a little bit more about the old vines. So once again, the old vines. This is usually, if we talked around uh, uh, the old vines, this was planted in the beginning of the 80s, the the, the, the vineyard. Uh, like I said, what makes it unique to that area of the Upper Galilee is uh, 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 that there's this slight little sub-region where there's volcanic rock erupting and a little bit of volcanic rock and volcanic soils mixing with the red soils of the limestone, creating perfect conditions for growing uh, grapevines and giving them complexity, helping the root system grow deep into the ground, maintain a good healthy uh, canopy uh, deep into the ground, getting to the to the to the natural. Uh, water, the natural, uh, uh, um, uh, I would say, yeah, the, the natural water is deep in, in the ground and letting the vines uh, uh, grow for many years, um, uh, helping them create, uh, when, when, the, when the old vines uh, get old, helping them create this very concentrated fruit. Um, uh, uh, some of the years we only get 500 kilos per dunam, which is, is really, it, it, it's nothing. Uh, and uh, what, what, what is really nice um, for me as a winemaker in creating this, this vine is, I really know that uh, all I need to do is just to be really careful in what I'm doing and, and this, 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 this uh, wine creates itself. I just need to get the fruit, pick the fruit, determine uh, the exact sugar level which we like, which is around 13 to 13.5 percent alcohol level, which would be in, in sugar levels uh, 24 to 25 bricks or 13 bume, uh, will be the exact time to harvest these grapes, uh, pick them kindly, bring them to the winery, uh, do the cold maceration, uh, the fermentation, the ripe vinification process, and just put them in barrels and let them age. And uh, the wine creates itself. This is what's so nice about this wine. That I see someone posted a question here. I know this is you know different because you have the cave, which is kind of it's part of the Amina winery, but it's really its its own thing. But someone was asking about the reserve cab, and if there's a, I know there's always you know vintage variation, but is there anything else going on that maybe the cab? The recent uh, release tastes different than previous vintages. Uh, are we talking about the 2017 or 18? But either way, if you made any change, yeah, we're still on the 17. But is there anything, the 17. Is there anything um, different from that in the previous vintages? Um, there was slight. Uh, we we had a grow in demand, so we 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 created a lot more, and uh, we we introduced uh, some young. 
uh, uh, some young vineyards of caps, so maybe they're not. Uh, it, it, it gives a slight different character to, to the wine um, that maybe wasn't there before. Um, but the, the, the grapes have, uh, have mat- matured a lot more over uh, the last year or so. I think you will, you will see it better in the 2018. Uh, maybe going back to, to what you expect to see. We haven't, well, we haven't changed anything in, 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 in the concept. And thank you for taking that, that trip out to the cave. It was really cool. Um, I had the chance to be there in person once, and I remember just the experience when you open those doors, and just like, you can see behind you, there's just barrels going on forever. Um, I was told that there was something special all the way in the back there, but I, I don't know if, uh, if, <laughs> if it's out for release yet or not. Maybe a brandy? I couldn't figure out what it was. Um, but whatever it is, maybe maybe at some point in time we can we can do another Zoom when you release whatever that is. Uh, for uh, everyone yeah. else, the actual winery itself is beautiful, um, very very hospitable. There's uh, I think we mentioned up front there's a, there's a restaurant, there's a great tasting room there. So anytime you're there, go ahead. It's uh, it's very it's right near the beach, not too far from the beach uh, in the Zichron Yaakov area. So go ahead, visit them, and. Um, Hopefully, we'll see you there. We'll see you on the next Zoom. Thank you, guys. Be in touch. Have a good day.